652 time for the morning sprint. Many are mourning the loss of a beloved educator. Beth Steffen was killed yesterday morning in a tragic accident hit while on a morning walk. Stefan was the principal of Badger Ridge Middle School in Verona. She worked at several schools in southern Wisconsin. You can find reaction and more up this morning on channel3000.com. A large plume of toxic chemicals has been detected in Green Bay. A plant that produces firefighting foam has seeped into the groundwater and is the likely culprit. The chemicals are known as PFAS, which are commonly found in nonstick cookware and water repellent sports gear. Exposure for PFAS for long periods of time can lead to cancer and other health problems. Walter Cunningham, the last member of the Apollo 7 mission, has died at the age of 90. Apollo 7 was the first Apollo mission to send American astronauts into space. His mission was fundamental in getting astronauts to the moon. Over his life, Cunningham accumulated over 4,500 hours of flight time in 40 different aircraft. More than 100,000 people have filed through St. Peter's Basilica to view the body of Pope Benedict XVI as he lies in state. The Vatican says a one-page account of Benedict's papacy will be placed inside his coffin. Pope Francis will celebrate the funeral uh, in St. Peter's Square Thursday. A Missouri inmate put to death yesterday for a 2003 killing in what's believed to be the first execution of a transgender woman in the U.S. Amber McLaughlin was convicted of stalking and killing former girlfriend, uh, then dumping the body near the Mississippi River in St. Louis. Breaking overnight, the driver of a Tesla who went over a cliff and plummeted 20, uh, 250 feet with his family is accused of attempted murder and child abuse. Dharmashay Patel of Pasadena will be booked into the San Mateo jail after he's released from the hospital. Eyewitness accounts and investigators found the crash to be intentional. Those in the car with Patel include a 41-year-old woman and a 7- and 4-year-old boy. Actor Jeremy Renner recovering in a hospital bed this morning after a New Year's Day accident in his home in Nevada. The 51-year-old posted a selfie and thanked his fans for their kind word. The Avengers star was run over by his snowplow, suffering blunt chest trauma and other injuries. The local sheriff says the accident happened while Renner was helping a family member who was stranded in three feet of snow. A Delta Airlines jet slid off the end of a taxiway in Minneapolis as it landed under icy conditions last night. The National Weather Service reported that the Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport was dealing with freezing drizzle, snow and fog at the time. No injuries were reported and the passengers were taken by bus from the jet to the terminal. No winner last night in the first Mega Millions drawing of 2023. That means the next drawing on Friday is going to be close to a billion dollars, 940 million to be exact. The winning numbers were 25, 29, 33, 41, and 44. No ticket matched all six numbers. That brings Friday's cash prize to an estimated $483.5 million. This morning, GE Healthcare announcing that its spinoff from GE is complete. The company will begin trading as an independent company on the NASDAQ exchange under the ticker symbol GEHC. GE Healthcare has headquarters in Milwaukee, Waukesha, and has locations all over the world with 50,000 employees. All right, we are waking up to some drizzle and fog this morning. Visibilities have actually come up quite a bit. In fact, we really haven't seen too much fog in Madison down toward Monroe, and the visibilities have been improving areas to the north and west. Just some wet roads, a little dreary this morning. Thankfully, temperatures are above freezing, so we're not seeing any kind of freezing precipitation. None of the roads are iced over this morning, like what we saw in spots yesterday morning. All right, it continues to snow piling up in uh, Minneapolis, a slow-moving storm system, primarily affecting the northern parts of the state off to the north and west. Right now, we're actually in the dry part of it, but I think eventually some of that colder air will work in. So we'll see some of this uh, rain, drizzle, snow, change over to all snow, maybe upwards of an inch of accumulation, but it doesn't look like much. Another system may produce a little bit of snow, it looks like by Friday night into a Saturday morning, maybe a lingering flurry on Sunday. A bigger storm system, it looks like next week, but temperatures in the mid-30s throughout uh, the week, so still remaining well above average. No, don't see any big, big Arctic air masses headed away, but a little bit cooler next week. All right, we're back in 30 minutes.